Hello there, this video will cover how to express colors as hexadecimal RGB color codes and as color names in any Linux system, including PCs, laptops, Androids, and Chromebooks. If you are interested in Linux on an Android, then you may be interested in my playlist that will cover how to install and set up a Linux desktop on an Android without running. There will be commands, further information, and updates in the pinned comments for this video. First, I will visually demonstrate and briefly explain hexadecimal RGB color codes and color names. The tool I will be using is the Pick a Color tool that is used for picking a background in the LXDE desktop. After my explanation, I will show some tools for picking and listing different colors. Hexadecimal color codes are six characters, often prefixed by a pound sign. Each pair of characters ranges from 00 to FF. This is the equivalent of 0 to 255. This gives us over 16 million color options. The first two characters represent red, the middle two characters represent green, and the last two characters represent blue. If all of the characters are zeros, we will get black, and if everything is all Fs, we will get white. Note that the tool I am using is automatically converting the hex color code to RGB decimal numbers for convenience. Now if we just max out the red value with FF, we will get red. If we only max out the green value, we will get green. And if we just max out the blue value, we will get blue. For some example color mixing, if we mix red and green, we get yellow. If we mix red and blue, we get magenta. And lastly, if we mix green and blue, we get cyan. An alternative we can use instead of hex color codes are color names. For example, if I type in red and I press enter, I will get red. If I type in orchid, I'll get some type of light purple. And if I type in slate blue, I'll get some type of blue. I will cover how to list all of the color names later in the video. Now a flexible tool we can use for picking colors is GPIC. To install GPIC, we can use Synaptic, which we can open up from the menu and in the Preferences category, we can click on Synaptic Package Manager. When Synaptic is open, we will first click on the Reload button to get an up-to-date list of the available software packages in Synaptic. When Synaptic is finished reloading, we can then click on the Search button and search by name for GPIC. When GPIC comes up, we can then right-click on it, select Mark for Installation, and then click on the Mark button for the additional required changes. From there, to install GPIC, we just need to click on the Apply button, and then click on Apply again to confirm that we want to install GPIC. When GPIC is done installing, we can generally ignore and close out of any errors. Later in the video, we will be using the command line tool called less, which is for displaying screenfuls of information. If less is not already installed on your device, then you can install that as well. When we are done with our installs, we can then close out of Synaptic. Now we can open up GPIC from the menu, and in the graphics category, we can click on GPIC. When GPIC opens up, it starts at the Color Picker tab where we can pick colors. If we click on the Pick Color button, we can then click from anywhere on our screen to get the hex color code of that specific spot. After clicking from anywhere on our screen, the hex color code is listed in the color palette on the right side. Keep in mind that the name that comes with the color is not a Linux color name that can be used elsewhere. To create a color, we can click on any of the pulldowns, such as RGB, and adjust the values to our liking. A corresponding hexagon will change according to the color we are picking. After we've picked a color, we can drag the color from the hexagon over to the color palette. To copy a color from the color palette and paste it elsewhere, we simply just have to select the color from the color palette, and then do Control c on our keyboard to copy the hex code, and then do Control v to paste it anywhere else. Next, we have the Scheme Generation tab. This is a tool that helps with finding colors for different color schemes, such as complementary colors, analogous colors, triadic colors, and more. 
Here we can drag and drop colors from the color palette over to the boxes of color and we will automatically get colors based off of the color scheme we have selected. We can also drag colors from the scheme generation tool over to the color palette as well. Note that dragging and dropping colors applies to most things in GPIC. Also, if there's a color combination that you like, remember you can always take a screenshot to save it. Lastly, we have the Layout Preview tab where we can see what different colors look like in various templates layouts. Like usual, we can drag and drop colors from the palette over to different layout elements to see what the colors look like in the layout. For more tools that we can use in GPIC, we can go to the View menu, and in the Secondary Views section, we can select from a variety of additional tools. To delete colors from the palette, we can right-click anywhere in the palette, and select Remove All to remove all of the colors. For more information on GPIC from a terminal, we can do GPIC space dash dash help, or we can do man space GPIC for a more detailed help. Now to list all of the color names from a terminal, we can do show RGB space pipe space less. Show RGB lists the colors from the RGB color name database. The pipe gives the output of the show RGB command to the less command, and the less command is for displaying screenfuls of information. When we execute the command, we get a list of colors as RGB decimal numbers along with their color names. To navigate through the list, we use the up and down arrow keys, and then to exit the display, we use the Q key. We can also filter through the list so we only get specific colors. For example, we can do show RGB space pipe space grep space blue. Grep filters the input so that only colors with the word blue are listed. If you enjoyed this video, then you may be interested in the companion book to this video, Linux on Android phones and tablets. And other than that, see you soon!